In proposition three, we're going to show that two negatives cancel one another out. So in other words, given any two real numbers x and y, if we multiply the negative of x by the negative of y, it will produce the same result as multiplying x by y. To begin, just as in propositions 1 and 2, we notice that this is a general statement about all real numbers. We can see this, again, from the presence of this universal quantifier that says for all values of x and y in the real numbers. This means we need to begin our proof by introducing arbitrary constants x and y, and we do this using a statement along the lines of let x and y be elements of the real numbers. From here, we need to demonstrate that for these arbitrary constants, negative x times negative y is equal to xy. And assuming we're able to do that, the principle of universal generalization will allow us to conclude that this is true for all real numbers x and y. Next, we need our demonstration. As usual, let's get out a piece of scrap paper. Just like proposition 2, proposition 3 is a property of negative numbers, which means we're going to be relying mostly on the axiom that tells us about negative numbers, which is axiom A4. Recall that axiom A4 says that any real number added to its negative will produce zero. In our case, the statement we're trying to demonstrate, negative x times negative y equals xy, contains two negatives. We have the negative of x, and we also have the negative of y. Applying our axiom to these, we get two equations. One says negative x plus x is equal to zero, and the other says negative y plus y is equal to zero. These are the equations we have to work with. Looking at the statement we're trying to prove, negative x times negative y is equal to xy, we can notice that it has this term negative x multiplied by negative y. Somehow we're going to need to introduce that into our equation. One way to do this would be to say, take our equation that says negative y plus y equals zero and multiply on both sides by negative x. By distributing the negative x, we get our term negative x times negative y. Our equation is now negative x times negative y plus negative x times y is equal to negative x times zero. Of course, from proposition one, we know that negative x times zero is zero, and so we now have the equation negative x times negative y plus negative x times y is equal to zero. Another thing we might notice is that this second term, negative x times y, looks familiar. This was the subject of proposition two. In proposition two, we showed that negative x times y is the negative of xy. And so we can look at our equation as now saying negative x times negative y plus the negative of xy is equal to zero. If at this point we just cancel out this negative xy term by adding xy to both sides, we will produce the equation that we're looking for, negative x times negative y on the left-hand side, and just xy on the right-hand side. Now, this demonstration works just fine, but again, I'd like to suggest another way of organizing this. If we look at the three-term expression, negative x times negative y plus negative x times y plus xy, we see that grouping the first two terms together will produce zero, and similarly grouping the second two terms together will produce zero. And so depending how these three terms are grouped, we can either produce zero plus xy, or we can produce negative x times negative y plus zero. And so just as in proposition two, we can produce one or the other result, just depending how we group these three terms. And so one way to organize this is to simply start with this three term expression on both sides of our equation and group the three terms in two different ways. On the left hand side, we can group the second two terms, and on the right hand side, we can group the first two terms. By showing that the expressions in brackets on both sides evaluate to zero, we will be able to show that negative x times negative y plus zero is equal to zero plus xy, which will give us the result we're looking for. Let's return to our proof. Again, we can begin with the three term expression, negative x times negative y plus negative x times y plus xy is equal to itself. And we can group these three terms in two different ways by grouping the second two terms on the left-hand side and grouping the first two terms on the right-hand side. The fact that this equation is true is simply an application of axiom A2, the fact that addition is associative, and so three terms can be grouped in any way we want.
Our job now is to go through the steps to show that the expressions in brackets on both sides will evaluate to zero. Starting with the left-hand side, we can notice that the two terms in brackets share a factor of y. By applying the distributive law, we can factor out this common y. Similarly, on the right-hand side, the two terms in brackets share a factor of negative x. Again, using the distributive law, we can factor this out. We now have in brackets on the left-hand side the expression negative x plus x, which of course evaluates to zero because of axiom A4. On the right-hand side, we have in brackets the expression negative y plus y, which similarly, because of axiom A4, evaluates to zero. This leaves us with negative x times negative y plus zero times y on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, negative x multiplied by zero plus xy. Because of proposition one, we know that any real number times zero is zero, so this allows us to reduce both the left-hand side and the right-hand side to negative x times negative y plus zero is equal to zero plus xy. Finally, applying axiom A3 that says any real number plus zero is itself, we get our result. At this point, having completed our demonstration, we can conclude by applying the principle of universal generalization that this is true for all real numbers x and y. Now we can notice that our conclusion is exactly the same as the proposition that we were trying to prove, which means our proof is complete.